You know what I found is really odd is the fact that whenever I was trying to punch this little wall, it acts like a little um, painting or something like that. But even then, it doesn't show the level itself. Hey everybody, this is me, Mickey Mouse here, and I'm back from the Maxi Toys, and welcome back to Mario's play of Super Mario 64 for the Nintendo 64. So last time we actually did finish Lethal Lava Land, from, um, ranging from the last mission on that level, and also the 100 coin Power Star mission. Even though despite I have some off-screen deaths here and there, but sure enough, I just have pretty much... I somewhat had a rough time on there just because I constantly found myself in the lava. And today for this video is that we're hopefully finishing up with Shifting Sand Land while doing the last mission in this world, po Pyramid Puzzle. And much like how I, do, how I do from the last video from the Lethal Lava Land, I'm actually going to do a 100 coin power star in this particular world. And if I'd done that, then I simply put, I'm pretty much done with um, 100 coin power star for this um, world, the Shifting Sand Land. Which, as I said earlier, it's not that bad of a level, but, it's just, but the only difficult part I found is 100 coin power star. So, um, there's also a bunch of other levels that was consistently, like, inconsistency, like, um, uh, uh, ranging from any sorts of difficulty until later on. But anyway, though. Moment here, we actually come across into, there's one thing I haven't mentioned this in the last videos that we come across into, is the Pokies. Every time when you're trying to kill him, assuming you can either kill him like two different methods you can do. Well, for one, you can either just use the bomb and just toss the Pokey from the top face, or you can just um, grab the, um, the green Koopa shell, so that once again, much like in Lethal Lava Land, you can surf onto sand and sinkholes. But, um, be sure to be careful not to bash onto these, any sort of, like, you know, walls and etc. Just because you will automatically die. So, you know, you don't want to let that happen. Especially when it's, like, a sinkhole is involved in that, too. So, um, yeah, that's all I can um, think of here for now, anyway. So, um, let's toss this mini box. Contains some bunch of, you know, coins and etc. So, um... Conveniently enough though, we pretty much almost halfway done with the game so far, as far as the playthrough is concerned. But even then though, again, um, as far as I said earlier, in a dozens of times, they are breaching for this game really, really quickly. So, um, anyway though, so, um, anyway though, mission number six, as far as the objective is concerned, that is very similar to the, um, the third mission, which was inside the pyramid. But the only noticeable difference is, is that once you get into the end of the pyramid, assuming with the, um, you know, the power star that was reveless into, on um, the third mission, except I'm gonna describe it now, and we have to do a different objective. So, yeah, you, I, I'll, I'll let you guys show, I'll let you show you guys know what I mean. So, um, yeah, if you kill the, um, the pokey, um, you actually get yourselves five, uh, um, five coins, in this case a blue coin, so, um, that would be pretty rewarding if you're actually trying to do a 100 coin power star mission, so, um, that's far as what I'm concerned I was going to do that, as I was going to say right now, so anyway, though, so, um, there's not much I could talk about for this video, folks, it's just basically that the, um, we haven't got long until the E3 press conference is about to come for Nintendo and Sony and Microsoft, even though that I think the other toys already explained to this dozens of times, which, um, which I think is especially noticeable in the new Super Mario Bros. Wii playthrough at this point in time, so, um, yeah, before we get into the pyramid, we need to take this crazy box into the other side, so that... Although, the only thing I need to keep an eye out, though, is the club, though, so just in case the club, though, um... To actually just almost trying to, um, took my hat, or in this case, took Mario's hat. So, um, if he tooks it, or if you're assuming if you actually exit the level or something like that, um, you'll essentially get into the, um, the hub world without any hat contact, so, um... Yeah, definitely want to keep your hat with you, though, just in case for a little, um, currency. Oh yeah, as far as you guys should know, that the blue coin switch is actually located inside the pyramid. And where's the blue coins exactly? Well, they were right there in that one specific spot. So, that's how you found throughout. So, um, yeah. Pretty easy, though, to get, um, to actually just to notice them from the start. 
and then run the bad dog. I think much like the even lava lands that I uh, should probably go ahead and save the um, the outside part for um for for first time and then you should be able to actually get into the inside um section at the very last possible moment. So if if you don't know, then you should be able to actually collect some of these coins with these. So yeah, that's far as I can um, imagine that earlier from the from the get go. Alright, so we have to be very careful here because I don't want to again don't want to get synced into the sinkhole no matter what. Because, you know, I don't wanna die in this level, so don't know what's in that level I don't know what's in here though. I think probably if I remember rightly it's gonna be uh, just a one up mushroom, which I don't think I could get a bunch of one ups for the time being, because even then though, no, um I only got about eighteen one ups or so, so yeah. However, though, whenever when I was going to finish up the, the recording session, especially when I was like turning the game off and turn the game back on, uh, what happens is, is my life count actually resets to uh, back to five, as opposed to um, sticking with um, some how much bunch of lives you actually obtain from, unlike Super Mario Sunshine, Super Mario 3D Land, and um, Super Mario 3D World. But uh, for this, Super Mario 64, and also the DS version of the game as well, and Super Mario Galaxy, and Super Mario Galaxy 2, if you turn the game off and you turn the game back on, then you'll have to restart the whole um, little life, um, extra life thing for um, back down to 5. I mean, yeah, it's a bit of a common sum at points, because especially noticeable if you're trying to uh, um, attempt to do a tougher sum levels routes in this game. But, um, still, it always happens to be like that. Okay, let's grab these coins in here, just in case I won't able to fall off like a complete idiot. So, a few things I want to mention about something is that recently, I actually um, pre-ordered myself a season's pass for um, Hyrule Warriors Legends, and right now, since we're still at um, the part of May, although... Gradually, we only got about a few days left until May was actually over, which I'm assuming today was actually the 29th of May. And then um, tomorrow, the new season of, on a new volume DVD for Sonic Boom is going to came out until like um, tomorrow, or in this case, yeah, tomorrow. And what's weirdly enough though, is that after when I pre-ordered that DVD, around the um, almost roughly at uh, like April or something like that, um, my package, as far as the Sonic Boom Hedgehog Day, that's what the DVD is titled as, um, seems late that I seem to got the DVD like three days earlier until this actual release, which I found to be quite weird, and plus it was also at the same time, because even now and then, now uh, whenever I was trying to pre-order some stuff, that after constantly waiting until when it was like an extra day and then stuff like that, which always kind of bothered me at points, but um, even then, that has always happens with some, um, especially noticeable if you uh, want to actually shipping those um, stuff from uh, different territories or different regions, like mainly the um, America, Japan, or stuff like that, then, um, oh god. But yeah, uh, the last few coins I'll be grabbing is just right onto this soul point right here. And there we go. So that's 100 coin power star. Even then, I didn't did this thing for a first try, surprisingly enough. So um, even then, though, that some people might actually give us a troublesome at points because sometimes that if you actually get accidentally sinked into the sink um sinkhole, uh, you automatically die from that point. So anyway though, um, this mission, Pyramid Puzzle, is basically very similar to Mario Wings to the Sky mission from Bob on Battlefield, like the exact same premise of grabbing specific amount of coins that um, there was a number related, related I meant, that um, except rather than just using the Wing Mario, instead we just only just have to walk onto the um, rapid sands. And occasionally you actually try to go ahead and grab those three um, regular coins while well, to simply put just hop onto one platform to another so um sometimes it's gonna have to work with your camera movements because sometimes if you do that then it will actually just try to make it work but um anyway so that wraps everything up in shifting sand lines. so um now we reach up to 66 but weirdly enough though we actually got about 64 power stars at the beginning of this video or the end of the last video i'm going to speak of 
that's um, it almost like a reference to um, the N uh, Nintendo 64 represents the 64 as a number. Anyways, let's move on to the next um, Stargate door. In order to actually access to it, it's by collecting 30 power stars. So, um, but before we actually do anything, there's actually another world we actually come across into, which was Dire Dire Docks. And the first mission we're about to be hidden to is Board Bowser's Sub. So, um, this is required in order to actually advance to the, um, the next Bowser level, because... If you do any other missions, you can't actually progress until you actually get into the second Bowser level, because... As far as you can tell from this world in general, this is very similar to jo um, Jolly Roger Bay, but except, um, uh, that... A bit of lacking when it comes to landscape, so instead we actually have ourselves entirely, um, water-based. So we have to constantly swimming from one side to another, you know, just like how it does in, in um... Uh, you know, Jolly Roger Bay. Even the music is pretty much exactly the same as before, so, um... At least I'm glad it has, um, that music up, because it is probably one of my favorite water themes so far for me. Alongside with, um, Cosmic Cove Galaxy from Super Mario Galaxy 2 and, um, stuff like that, and also the, um, the underwater theme from Super Mario Sunshine. Oh my god, that music is so beautiful! Anyway, en enough about that topic, so anyway... In this mission right here, we have to go onto this side of this level, and then as soon as you come across into one of those switches, mostly the estimation mark switches, if you stand on one of those, um, that way that activates these little um, brick blocks, as you can tell, so that it will lead you to the Bowser's sub itself. So, um, yeah, it's not much I can just, you know, think about this mission, so all you have to do is pretty simple, just head off to the Bowser's sub, and there you go. And then once you complete the specific mission, this level starts to push backwards so that, um, even though you still manage to approach into the level no matter what though, but if you actually come across into this hole, welcome to the second Bowser level, which was known as Bowser in the Fire Sea. So, um, as you expected, most like Leaf or Lava Land, there's gonna be a lot of lava involved. So, Every time when you get hit by the lava three times, you only, you will die. So you just have to be very, very cautious and be very careful. It's all about precisioning too. Alongside with that, there are some bullies in here and there. So uh, we also have to watch out for those. Another is worth noting is that um, since there was only like um, there are like you know very much like how it does in Bowser in the Dark World, that um. We're gonna have to collect a, eight red coins, you know, just like how it does it before. So, um, except they have to actually just, you know, I don't know what I said. So anyway, though, um, back into what I was saying about the, um, the Hyrule Warriors Legends, um, season pass. Um, not only that, since this was the, um, um, since this is the, um, almost near the end of, the, um, end of May, so that we can move on to June, and probably during the summer term, that's, uh, we're almost done with the spring, um, season, so, um, perhaps even then, though, not only did I download the season pass from the get-go from Horror Warriors Legends, which only costs about £15.29, pence, by the way, that, um, this allows me to actually get onto the, um, if you, assuming it depends on how much days does it, um, take, that, um, until upon its release, um, Considerably, that um, it will actually allows me to actually just to play these types of um, adventure maps, unlock more characters, assuming that both the 3DS and the Wii U, very similar to Super Smash Bros. Um, DLC fighters and stages at the same time, including costumes as well. That um, yeah, that's all about it basically, and I was hoping I can looking forward to actually playing those courses. I haven't exactly touched Hyrule Warriors at all for um, quite a few um, quite a few days or so. It's mostly because I always even constantly find myself just playing some other Zelda games instead. Like I'm still working on um, the, a link between worlds in my own time, and then um, as well as um, the Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword of uh, uh, my own time as well. So even then, yeah. And then um. Another thing I'd like to talk about is that, um, 
I actually recently um, downloaded myself a new Nintendo uh, Wii U eShop download. It's not Mario Slam Basketball or anything. Instead, we actually have ourselves uh, Mario Party DS, which was on the Nintendo DS. And uh, because of that, though, it was about time. To, uh, it's a good timing, too, because um, until at the end of this year, after when, um, when we actually did manage to did tackle through three Mario Party playthroughs in 2015, which was last year, the first being Mario Party 10, and another which was Mario Party 2, and then Mario Party 9. So, um, now for the time being, that, um, hopefully, it so depends on the release date of that playthrough of the Mario Party DS, um, now we can manage to tackle through Mario Party DS during some time in the future, for mostly during in this year. So, um, with that being said, though, that, I'm pretty excited to actually do this, although other toys have to do that, so because of that, I've already done Mario Party um, 6 a long time ago. But I need to do a remake play for that game at some point, because the quality itself looks horrendous. Especially for that, you know, the stupid camera quality. You know, like 440, uh, 240p? No thanks. Alright, onwards to the second Bowser battle. Oh gosh, we have a look at this little ugly face again. But anyway though, this battle is pretty much exactly the same as before, except the only difference is being is that Bowser, if he as soon as he actually uses his ground pound technique, or the stomp um, technique, um, he actually actually managed to tilt the, uh, the platform or the arena itself. Which, you have to be very careful with the lava, because if you fell into the lava, not only you actually just uh, lose a life, but thankfully though, it doesn't kick you out of the um, in the level, or in this case, it just kick you out of the um, from that Princess Peach's castle, and then you just well, assuming if you actually die in a boss battle like this, you will uh, kicked out of the arena, and just although you still manage to get to the uh, the nearest point of the earth. So um, anyway though, much like the first Bowser battle, he only gets like one hit. So. Um, that's how this thrust is for this battle, so, um, um, does this thing need to be triggered somehow? Oh, there we go. So, um, yeah, now we're done with the second Bowser battle, and this will actually give me the second, um, Bowser key. I'm guessing this might actually be the last, um, key from now on, because until the later sections of the Princess Peach's castle, that, um, we have to mostly collect in those, um, power stars in order to continue and progress. So, there we go. Bowser in the Fire Sea. So, um, there we go. Now let's head back to Dio Dio Docks, and then just move on to the second mission, which we have... Chests in a Current. So this is very similar to um, the ones in um, Joey Roger Bay, mostly for those two treasure missions. But except the only difference is being is that rather than just actually entering the ship, we also we need to do this in the underwater. So there's going to be many times where um, if you actually um, open up the treasure chest or something like that, assuming if you actually get the correct spawning sequence. Right now I'm doing really, really miserable at the moment because I haven't played this game for a long period of time since, you know, 2013 and stuff like that. There we go, there's one. But every time when you get the correct spawning chest to open, then the air bubble will actually shows up. You know, very similar to the lap with zone from um, Sonic 1 or something like that. So, um, I'm guessing this chest might be the one, isn't it? Uh, let's just have a look, shall we? Although, again, I might actually just seem to be confused at the point right there. Oh, okay, that helps. <laughs> so I'm guessing the last treasure chest should be up there. So um, before we get to the last treasure chest, we need to hit the one that was up. Uh, where well, I did manage to get this wrong attempt from before. So, uh, yeah. So I don't think I could grab the air bubble for the time being, but um, anyways, let's go ahead and uh, grab this last treasure chest, and we should be good to go from that part right there, so... Be sure to be careful trying to get to the last treasure chest though, because that little um, current will actually trying to suck you into that little hole right there. And basically, you don't want to accidentally get sucked into the current, because if you do, you will automatically die. Oh, go, 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 go! I don't want to die from here, because if I do, then I have to redo the whole uh, puzzle solving thing for that again. But, um, and also you have to mind out for that sushi right there, because sushis can also hurt you, so, um, 
Just be careful of those. So there we go, there's the chests in the current. So um, now we got one more power star until we actually reach up to 70 power stars, which um, we'll explain more into that when we get into the next video. So um, anyway though, mission number three, pole jumping for red coins. So as you probably expected, I might actually go ahead and do the 100 coin power star for this mission or this level as well. So there's going to be two 100 coin power star missions in one video, so... Those are the same likes of, um, I'm pretty sure also from, um, the, the other videos ago, assumingly that's in a Jolly Roger Bay one, and, uh, although I may be wrong about that, although I think I was, yeah, I think I was right, that we just did, uh, the ones in Jolly Roger Bay and, um, Cool Cool Mountain at the same time as well. And, truth be told, I think I also did that on, um, um, I forget. We got what is that? Anyway, though, so it might take a bit of a long time to actually try to get these um, every single coins in this level, just because that um, there's not much um, coins around here, and also there's not too many enemies contain coins in sight. So um, I bet this could be quite um, long. Um, 100 coin power stars thing. Oh shoot! Yeah, excuse me, as you can see, the sushi actually trying to hurt you, so you have to be watch out for those. You know, think of the likes of the on the blooper beach from Mario Party 9, as far as the party board, that one of the hazards on that board, it was definitely be the sushi, so... Which, if you get hurt by a sushi like that, you will instantly lose so you'll have your mini stars, which wasn't that good for some players. So yeah, we can assume that we can grab those coins from there's a ring fashion, um, coins layout, so, um... Yeah. See, I don't mind, um, the Dio Dio Docks. It's very similar to, um, Jolly Roger Bay, but, um, with, um, different, um, settings as far as when the, um, the setup is concerned. Uh, you know, you still get to the other side of the, um, you know, the swimming, um, water parts and then just get onto the platform itself. So anyway, though. Yeah, I have no idea what I was doing right there, but, um, anyway, though. So, um... And lastly, before we um, end things off for um, the conversation, what, uh, what things I did uh, for this uh, little point right there, is that I finally managed to download all the DLC packs of New Super Mario Bros. 2. Now, the reason why I say that is because, um, back in 2013's playthrough of the New Super Mario Bros. 2, which, again, it was being currently deleted because of how, um, how bad the quality of the, these first just set of few parts were. Although, it, it did pretty well at the end though, but I'm just saying that, um, that the quality itself is so right and such, but um, at least the end part of the playthrough was actually not that bad, but the playthrough itself is now removed, and um, because of that we had to like to do a remake playthrough on that game sometime. I think I already done the first game, and then Mario and Sonic did manage to finally done the Wii installment, or the Wii installment of the new Super Mario Bros. series. And now I think Piglet is the mouse to tackle for New Super Mario Bros. 2 now, so hopefully they'll come out sometime in the future, mostly due to next month, or probably the summertime. Because right now that we actually almost, or, or immediately done the um, the winter season from the uh, the first New Super Mario Bros. game playthrough, and um, as well that um, the spring season that we've now done New Super Mario Bros. Wii. And I think during the summer term that I think we'll do the New Super Mario Bros. 2. And then during the autumn season that we can move on to New Super Mario Bros. U. Which I'm assuming New Super Mario Bros. U might actually be a possibly the fun finale of the New Super Mario Bros. series. Although I may be wrong though, because depending on the uh, Nintendo NX is about to be revealed. But it doesn't going to be released until 2017. Or any reveals from um, E3, to e E3 this year, sadly. So... Yeah. No, as you can see on this huge hole right there, as you can probably imagine, that um, this is actually a, another current where not only, um, although luckily though you don't die from that little current for that uh, um, that hole over, over there, as you can see, um, that way that will actually kick you out of the level and it actually teleports you back to Princess Peach's castle's hub world, assuming the outside field part, so... Not in the inside of Princess Peach's castle, no. Instead, we just you get um, get back into the, all the way to the beginning of Princess Peach's castle. You know, just like how it does in the Metal Cap course. So, 
Yeah, basically in this mission right here, we have to collect those red coins as you expected. And then basically the whole entire premise of this level is by doing a pole jumping. So, um, you know, these poles just start to move. And by the way, the blue coin switch is right over there. And basically they contain six blue coins. So, again, it's really easy to get those um, coins from that particular spot. So, um, and then... In the Shifting Sandland, uh, blue coins are uh, how much amount of the blue coins they actually contain from. I think now it contains like, um, let's say, um, three blue coins. So I think that since overall I just have myself uh, 86 um, coins in total, um, I'm presuming that I might actually reach up to a fair amount into 100 um, power stars for now. So um, yeah. I should be able to be um, twice as good for that uh, little department right there. But it depends on how much time I actually record on this. But what I even know right now, I am immediately at 26 minutes recording session. But um, sometimes though, some missions can get pretty long at, uh, at one point or another. But it um, depends on how much faster your movement is going to be like. So um, yeah, there you go. Alright, so the next uh, three set of red coins are located just onto here. So anyway though, the reason being I was going to say that on the new Super Mario Bros. 2 DLC thing, um, that uh, Piglet might actually do it, go ahead and, um, well, Piglet will explain to that until when he starts to manage to do new Super Mario Bros. 2 until sometime in June this year, so don't worry, he will do it, he will tackle that eventually. So, um, now I've got three red coins left, so that, oh, this may be a bit of a really cool decision, is that, um, even then, it's been a while since we actually be sawing the, um, the two pop, um, two power stars popped up all at once, but, um, damn it, I still can't even reach that dang platform, which contains, like, a red coin, all the red coin star, because, you know, the shadowy part right there, I'll have to get off first. So, anyway, though, um, Right, let's see if I can make this this time. Jump! There we go. And the last three red coins are just mostly for that spot over there, as you can see from the distance, because, you know, the red coin is actually spinning. So, um, you know, there's not much I can talk about for um, this video at this point, folks, even though that, um, I don't think we can get as many power stars in this video, but definitely in the next video, we will be. Sure enough, we will. So anyway, though, so let's uh, jump from pole to pole right there. And the last two red coins are over to this side in the foreground, or the background rather. And then this one is actually in the foreground over there. And then uh, we already got um, two red coins left and four more to go. For coins to put anyway. And we got one more red coin and that will take us to 100 coin power star and the red coin power star itself. So one pops out there, a little pole right there. Now, here's the most hilarious part about this, is that if you grab the power star when you're actually using a pole, you immediately stand onto the, um, the water, on the water right there. <laughs> oh, oh, and yeah, the, uh, the 70 power stars thing, that if I actually got that, then yeah. And then, you simply, bro, you just automatically get onto swimming water part again. That's actually pretty, um, cool, and, um, audience guy is pretty, um, ridiculous at the same time. But, um, anyway, though, so now we got 70 power stars, and basically that if, if you guys are actually first time playing this game for your first time around, um, assuming if you actually get into the last level of the game, uh, this is the amount of power stars you'll be required to collect, because even then though, I'll explain more into that when we actually uh, decide to get into that. So um, anyway though, there we go. I think we actually collected 7 power stars in this video, so um, I guess there's not much in terms of how collecting power stars we actually collect from. But anyway, so we'll basically finish this video here, so next time, on Let's Play Super Mario 64, is that we're hopefully finishing up Dio Dio Docks and we'll move on to the next floor. So see you guys next time. Later, fellas.